What's up guys? So um, this week's fight cards really didn't interest me too much so we're not going to talk predictions today. Uh, instead we're going to talk about the biggest news that happened in MMA this week which is the retirement of George St. Pierre. Um, what does this mean for his legacy? Is he the GOAT? And um, what he sort of means to MMA fans in general. So uh, let's do this. Let's talk about this guy. Okay, so word on MMA Street is that uh, GSP was trying to get uh, one last fight in his career um, against Khabib for the uh, lightweight champion. Um, obviously, the reason he would want that is to become the first ever fighter to become champion in three weight classes, but unfortunately, the UFC wanted none of that. Now, I can see why the UFC didn't want this fight. I mean, it's pretty obvious. GSP, I mean we all know when GSP fought Michael Bisping for the middleweight title, he wasn't defending that belt. Even when they, Dana said he put it in the contract that he had to defend the belt, I wasn't buying it. And obviously GSP won the belt and disappeared. So totally understandable why the UFC didn't want this fight. Uh, but it's very unfortunate because obviously Khabib wanted the fight, GSP wanted the fight. And for a guy like GSP who's done so much for the sport, I mean he really deserved that fight and deserved really to do what he wants. So with his retirement now, what does this mean for his legacy? I mean, is he the GOAT? I mean, I think with his retirement and the timing of it all, at this stage, you can't argue that he is one of, if not the greatest of all time. He's by far the smartest mixed martial artist of all time. I mean, he was a Kyokushin karate guy who ended up becoming one of the greatest wrestlers in the sport. One of the smartest fighters to ever step in the cage smart inside the cage as well as smart with his career moves. I mean, a lot can argue that, you know, he uh, was ducking Anderson Silva when that was talked about being a super fight, but to be honest, he was always honest about it. He knew that Silva would be a tough matchup for him because of the size difference. Um, he was always honest with himself. And we cannot really judge him on something that we don't know. Yes, maybe he tried to avoid certain fights in his career, but when it's all said and done, we can only judge George St. Pierre on the performances that we have seen him in. I personally think that retiring now is the smart thing to do. I mean, let's be honest, the guy's 37 years old, his body's no longer in his prime. Um, when he fought Michael Bisbing, I'm not gonna lie, I picked Bisbing for that fight. As much as I wanted George to come back and you know become champion again, um, I picked Bisbing based on the fact that Bisbing is very active, He's very durable as a fighter, um, and obviously he's got amazing cardio. And for GSP to be out for, what was it, four or five years, or however long it was, like, I just couldn't buy the fact that he was gonna come back and just whoop Bisbing. Um, and look, to be honest, he didn't. He definitely, uh, Bisbing had his moments. In fact, I thought very much so that GSP slowed down probably more than I've ever seen him in any fight in the past. Um, according to George and the Joe Rogan podcast, I believe he said that he actually got clipped pretty hard, which is what actually made him slow down. He wasn't actually gassy, but he did not look like the same GSP from the past. Uh, maybe because he was a little bit fatter, or bigger, sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely didn't look like the same GSP that we used to know. Now let's talk about why he is possibly the greatest of all time. I mean, he defended his title nine times. Now for me, a guy who defends his title, that, that is, for me, the greatest fighters of all time are those guys who clean out their division. I mean, he's got on his resume, Matt Hughes, Josh Koscheck, uh, Jake Shields, Carlos Condit, John Fitch, Nick Diaz, Johnny Hendricks. I mean, a lot of those names might not mean much today, but when George was fighting them, they, those guys were in their primes and hungry for his belt. So he fought those guys and I, dominated all of them. Now, you can argue whether or not he won the Hendrix fight. And look, to be honest, maybe I'm being biased. Uh, I've only watched that fight, I think twice, and it's been quite some time, but I do think GSP won that fight. Um, yes, Hendrix landed some good shots. Yes, GSP couldn't really take him down and out wrestle him. But at the end of the day, GSP, I feel like outpointed him in some ways. You can say, yes, Hendrix landed some shots that hurt him, but he never wobbled GSP. GSP was taking hard shots and kept coming forward and sort of outpointing Johnny in, in my opinion. But back to defending your title, 
all great fighters, I think, need to defend their titles. I mean, I don't understand this world we're living in today where these guys are winning a title and then all straight away wanting to fight the other champions when they haven't even defended their t title yet. Now, almost all fighters will tell you that, or coaches at least, will tell you becoming champion isn't the hardest thing. Staying champion is the hardest thing. I mean, think about how many people have actually been champions, but how many people have had those epic, epic title reigns? Um, think about the light heavyweight belt. Between Chuck Liddell and John Jones, you know how many champions there were? I mean, Chuck Liddell got knocked out by Rampage. Rampage lost his title to Forrest Griffin. Forrest Griffin lost his title to Rashad Evans. Rashad lost to Machida. Machida lost to Shogun. And then John Jones won the title of Shogun. That's five guys who held the belt. Rampage and Machida were the only guys to defend the title and they both only did it once. Think about Luke Rockhold. He mauled Chris Weidman when they fought and won the belt. And everyone probably thought, man, Luke Rockhold's gonna be champion for a long time. First title defense gets knocked out by Bisming. That's how hard it is to defend your title. Anyone can beat you on any given day. Now look, you can argue that John Bones Jones is the greatest of all time, and look, I'm not gonna disagree with you there, he's absolutely amazing, but I have always said that John Jones one day will lose. I mean, most fighters seem to. I mean, Cyborg, so what happened to her recently? Um, I've always said John Jones will eventually get tagged. Uh, so far in his career, look, he has been hit, and has absolutely shown that he's got an amazing chin. But he's been talking about going to heavyweight for a long time. It's inevitable, he says. Uh, we haven't seen him at heavyweight. We haven't seen him take a punch from a true heavyweight. Um, we haven't seen John Jones on wobbly legs. And dude, that guy has skinny legs. When he's on wobbly legs, he might be in trouble. Uh, I've been saying for a long time, someone will eventually tag John Jones, and that will be a true test of how great he truly is. I mean, can you imagine if Francis Ngannou landed a shot on John Jones? What would happen? I wanna know. GSP on the other hand, yes, we've seen him get rocked and then finish by Matt Serra, um, but we've also seen him come back from that, prove to Matt Serra that GSP is the better fighter, go in his long title reign, and obviously when he fought Carlos Condit, the famous head kick, had him on Wobbly Street, what happened? He recovered, and in fact, won the, came back and won the rest of that round. And just a little off topic here, Mighty Mouse, Absolutely, I think up there with GSP is the greatest pound for pound fighter of all time. I mean, 11 title defense is insane. Um, something that Joe Rogan has said before, which baffles me a little bit, is obviously he believes John Jones is one of the greatest of all time, uh, and that Mighty Mouse has fought title defenses were against guys who weren't as accomplished. And I say that's bullshit. The flyweight division are one of the most well-rounded divisions I have, I think, of all time. I've never seen a flyweight fighter who look bad really in any area. I mean, other divisions, like those heavier divisions, sometimes you get guys who are good at one thing but terrible at others. Um, sometimes you see fighters who I'm just like, you don't look good anywhere. Hey, I'm not trying to be a hater. I know these guys will kick my ass, but I'm just saying. The guys Mighty Mouse has fought have been all well-rounded in all areas. No bad areas at all. John Burns Jones, yes, his greatest, his greatest defenses have been against Gustafson, Cormier, Glover, but guys like Shogun and Rashad, Machida, I mean, those guys, Belfort, they were all on the decline on their career. They weren't at their peak, I don't believe. So for me, I think GSP, the way his career has panned out, taking that time off, coming back and winning the middleweight champion, I mean, you, you cannot deny that he is possibly the greatest fighter of all time. Now, last thing I want to talk about is one thing that a lot of MMA fans, supposed MMA fans, um, hate is wrestlers who take you down and obviously grind out a decision. Um, so why was GSP so popular? And how did a guy, I mean, out of his nine title defenses, eight of those were decisions. So how did a guy who like that become, why was he such a big pay-per-view draw? Pretty simple answer. Um, the way he carried himself inside and outside the cage. I mean, how could you not like that guy? In a world where the world was still calling cage fighting human cockfighting and um, thinking of fighters as thugs, GSP really wanted to show the world what a true martial artist was. He was a traditional martial artist. And to be honest, as time goes on, that is just not gonna exist anymore, I don't believe. I mean, the guy's such a nice guy that 
in one of his interviews, I'm pretty sure he said the word kick ass and then apologized for swearing. <laughs> That's cute. So one of my favorite GSP moments of all time was actually in his documentary, Takedown, The DNA of GSP. If you have not seen it, you should check that shit out. Um, there was a moment, I think he's recovering from his operation or just come out from getting an operation done. And I believe he was still sort of on, you know, still coming down off the drugs and stuff like that. And he's talking to his team. He's about to fight Nick Diaz. And he's just like, I cannot wait to fight Nick Diaz. We are going to fuck him up. We're going to fuck him up. And it was just um, really funny for me to see someone like him who loves to be such that gentleman type of guy uh, to, you know, have some sort of humanity about him. Like, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they're cage fighters. They are savages. Like for you to want to get into a cage and test your skills against another train killer, I mean, that's just insane to me. So it was good to see uh, that human side coming from George. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. What else can I say about GSP? I mean, I am impressed by your career. Uh, it was a pleasure to watch his fights. A pleasure to watch his interviews. Um, pleasure to watch him talk about aliens and stuff like that. Um, the guy is just an all-around class act and um, got nothing bad to say about the guy. Um, I'm sure we all wish him well uh, in whatever he chooses to do uh, after his MMA career. Look, he's always going to be one of my favorites of all time, no matter what. I mean, the guy makes four appearances on this shelf every year. I mean, I got him up here, I got him in here, I got him there, I got another one down here. Um, the guy is an absolute legend. I love that man. Um, thank you for a great career and always being a class act.